Hi folks, I'm HR Funk, and I'm here to give you all a review of this Cimarron Model P revolver. Now I was told by some of you not to use my Western accent when I did this review, but I thought, you know what? If you got it, flaunt it. Okay, okay, I'll stop. <laughs> I'll stop. All of you with the true Western accent, stop yelling at your computer screen. I'll stop and go back to my native Ohio drawl. I'll quit butchering your truly wonderful dialect. But I am going to be doing a review of the Cimarron Model P revolver, which is what I have here. We're going to be taking a close-up look at it in this video, and I can tell you already, this is a wonderful, wonderful revolver, and I think you're all really going to enjoy taking this look at the Cimarron Model P. By the way, this was provided to me by House of Pain Munitions for this review. So I'm actually going to be recording the up-close view of the Cimarron Model P outdoors. So I apologize now for any background noise you might hear. But I'm out here because I think the finish of this revolver looks absolutely gorgeous in the bright sunlight. And you can see as we take our first look that this revolver has the classic lines of the traditional Colt 1873 with that beautiful case hardened frame. The bluing is very nice. Now I have noticed a couple of minor blemishes in the bluing and I don't know if you're going to be able to see it here but there is what appears to be a run probably from some of the bluing salts when the barrel was originally blued and I noticed on this side there's an area right in through here where the bluing is a little lighter than it is on the rest of the barrel. And if this were a $2,000 Colt, I would probably be much more concerned about those minor imperfections than I am with a $600 Cimarron. But beyond those two minor nits that I've just picked, this revolver is absolutely beautifully finished. I don't see any flaws at all on the cylinder. And I'll rotate that slightly so you can see and for anyone who might be concerned I'll go through quick and demonstrate that we do have once I get it into half cock an unloaded Cimarron Model P. Now I don't know if you're going to be able to read the barrel legend there or not but this revolver is manufactured by A. Uberti of Italy for Cimarron in Fredericksburg, Texas. And these revolvers are manufactured to Cimarron specifications. And as I understand the story, when Uberti first started making single action Colt clones back in the 1980s, or maybe it was actually before that, the 1970s, they were not exact copies of the standard Peacemaker design. So Cimarron actually sent an antique Colt Peacemaker to Uberti in Italy so that they could make measurements and drawings and essentially re-engineer that revolver so that this version is as close to an original Colt single action as you can find. In fact, according to Cimarron, this is the most authentic version of a Colt reproduction that you can currently purchase. Now this revolver does come in quite a few different variations. In fact, I read somewhere that Cimarron offers more variations of the single action army design than Colt ever did, which I think is interesting. But you can find this revolver with different finishes. This is the standard blue with the case hardened frame. It also comes in a charcoal blue, which is very nice looking, and what they call an original finish, which appears to be a revolver that was left in the white it does, as I understand, have a protectant over it to help keep it from rusting, but that gives it that old-time look like an antique revolver. These also come in different barrel lengths, just like the Colt. As you can see, this is the 5.5 inch version, and I prefer this version because I think the 5.5 inch just looks the most balanced. Now, it's not as fast out of leather if you're trying to quick draw as the 4 and 3 quarter inch, which is another variation. 
and it doesn't give you the sight radius or the ballistic performance of the seven and a half inch barrel which is the long version but i just prefer the five and a half inch these revolvers also come in several different chamberings beginning with 3220 and going all the way up to 45 colt and there's also a 45 colt 45 acp version that it features dual cylinders this one is chambered for the 357 Magnum cartridge. Now, before anybody gasps and starts to scream sacrilege at your computer screen or your phone, I chose the 357 version intentionally because I think it's going to be a more economical revolver to shoot than something chambered for the 45 Colt. And also, I can shoot it most of the time for my general purpose shooting with 38 special ammunition which will be mild recoiling and just fun to shoot and if for some reason i happen to need more power i can always load 357 magnum ammunition in it so i did choose the 357 slash 38 special version on purpose and that was my thinking behind the choice now as close as the cimarron model p is to the original colt design there are a couple of minor differences and one of those has to do with the sights and as I understand it the front sight is slightly wider than the original Colt and the rear sight groove and the top strap is slightly narrower and the idea was to be able to provide the shooter with a better sight picture than you would get with an original Colt single action army. I think that's a very minor difference and had I not read that somewhere i don't think i would have ever known it i don't know if i can get you a sight picture here or not i have a lot of glare on my screen so for the next part of the video as you can see i've gone ahead and brought everything back into the shop reason being i'm going to get into a little bit of a technical discussion and i want to make sure that no passing road noise or any other background noise blocks out anything i'm about to say because i want to make sure everyone hears this correctly and this has to do with another difference between this revolver and the original Colt Peacemakers. You've seen a lot of people in different videos talk about the original Colts having four hammer positions. And when you cock the hammer, you basically can spell C-O-L-T with one, two, three, four clicks. This revolver, as you'll see, has one, two, three clicks. Now there are some shooters and some purists that are going to eschew that and want the original four click action. I'm going to explain to you why this revolver only has three clicks and why, to my way of thinking, it's not really anything major. But if you're a purist and you want one of these revolvers from Cimarron that is an Uberti built revolver, I'll tell you how you can still get one. But in order to start this discussion, I'm going to grab my first ever cartridge firing handgun. This was given to me, I think, on my 12th birthday by my father. This had been his revolver. It is a genuine Colt, albeit chambered for the 22 rimfire cartridge. This is a Colt Frontier Scout. And when I cock it, if you listen closely, there are four clicks. This is the original Colt action, so C-O-L-T. And the very first notch, or the very first click, maybe I should say, right there, as you can see, positions the hammer just off the frame, just barely off the frame. And it was essentially a safety that was built into these early revolvers, or the early Colts, with the idea that if you had six rounds, one round in each chamber, so there would be a live round under the hammer, the revolver could be put in this safety position, and if the hammer received a sharp blow, if the revolver was dropped or what have you, that would help prevent the hammer from moving forward and allowing the firing pin to strike the primer of the chambered cartridge, thereby causing an unintended discharge. By the way, a Colt called that first hammer position the safety cocked position. And if I were to take the hammer out of the revolver, you would see that there is a very deep notch in the hammer right there that the sear fits into to prevent that hammer from moving forward. In fact, the hammer would have to break. It would have to be struck with sufficient energy to break 
that piece off of the hammer to allow it to move forward. Moving back to the Cimarron, you'll notice that the safety cock position is the one that's missing. When I start to thumb the hammer back, there's not a click until it's in the half cock position, which is the one that frees the cylinder for loading and unloading. So we have the half cock, the three quarter cock, and the full cock notch. So the only one that's missing is that first safety cock position. Now you might be saying at this point, why would Cimarron delete a safety position from the hammer? Doesn't that do away with one of the safeties that Colt built into these revolvers all the way back in the early 1870s? The answer to that is not really. And the reason is because there is another safety system designed into this revolver that makes that first safety cock notch rather superfluous. And in order to demonstrate this, I'm going to remove the cylinder from the revolver. By the way, as I'm preparing to disassemble the revolver, this is a good place to point out another variation that's available from Cimarron with these firearms. They have the old model revolvers, which are basically the design of these revolvers that was manufactured by Colt prior to 1896. The old model is distinguishable because rather than having the cylinder pin latch on the side, there is a screw that goes into the front of the frame right here that retains the pin in place. This is considered a pre-war model, which dated from 1896 until the Second World War. And the reason that this latch is here is because in order to remove the cylinder, you don't have to unscrew anything. You just push in on this latch and then you can pull the cylinder pin out, which frees the cylinder so long as the loading gate is open, to come out of the revolver. To initiate this whole sequence, you have to first put the revolver in the half cock notch. Now I'll go ahead and disassemble it, which I can't do on camera because YouTube will then restrict this video for showing something apparently that's untoward. So as you can see, I have now removed the cylinder without having the horrific vision of me actually doing so on camera. And if you look closely, you'll notice the hammer is in the forward resting position and we can see the firing pin protruding through the frame right there. Now, with an actual Colt, if this was a Colt revolver, if I reached up here and pushed on the firing pin, it would remain right where it is. It would literally be resting on the primer of a chambered cartridge. But you notice when I pushed on the firing pin there, it actually pushed back into the frame. And there's a reason for that. When we cock the Cimarron Model P, hold the trigger back and release it, again we'll see the firing pin protruding through the frame. And I'm holding pressure back on the trigger at this point, and now the firing pin does not push back into the frame. It stays right there. When I release pressure on the trigger, I can push it back into the frame again. And the hammer is resting on the frame at this point. So the whole reason this design was built into the revolver with a transfer bar in the hammer is so that if you carry a fully loaded cylinder with a round under the hammer and the hammer receives a blow, the revolver is dropped and lands on the hammer or what have you, so long as there's no pressure on the trigger, the revolver shouldn't fire. So that renders that first safety cock position of the hammer superfluous, as I said before. That's the whole reason that this has three clicks in the action rather than four clicks. Now, a couple of more things about this whole transfer bar safety and number of clicks and all that. First off, Cimarron still recommends that these revolvers be carried with an empty chamber under the hammer. They're still recommending the load one, skip one, and load four more, cock the hammer, ease it down, and then it's resting on an empty chamber. So there is still that recommendation, and I called Cimarron this morning to talk this all over with them, and the gentleman that I talked to 
along with explaining that whole transfer bar safety did ask that I mention that in the video that Cimarron still is recommending that shooters not carry a live round under the hammer just for safety purposes. The other thing the gentleman from Cimarron asked me to make everyone aware of is that if customers still want a Cimarron pre-war, now keep in mind pre-war has the plunger on the side that allows the pin to be removed from the cylinder without having to remove the screw. You just push in on that plunger and remove the screw. So if customers want a pre-war Cimarron revolver that still has the four-click action, they only have one model that is an Uberti that has that particular four-click action, and that is in their Evil Roy line. So again, if customers want an Uberti manufactured Cimarron with a four click action like the original Colt Peacemakers, it has to be one of their Evil Roy line in order for the customer to get that particular feature. So now with that whole discussion of clicks and safety notches and differences between the transfer bar system and the original Colt system out of the way, let's talk about the action of this revolver, which is very, very smooth. The cocking action feels great. The timing, as you can see, is perfect. The trigger, I'm going to weigh momentarily, but it breaks very, very nicely. I can't detect any creep. There's a little bit of over-travel, but I think that's pretty common with these revolvers. So it feels very good. Bringing it back to the half cock notch. <laughs> Bringing it back to the half cock notch. And releasing the cylinder, it turns freely. The ejector rod moves freely. The ejector rod housing feels like it's anchored properly onto the barrel. So all in all, the action of this Cimarron Model P is fantastic. Now let's check that trigger pull weight. And here we go. I'm only going to dry fire this one time because I don't have any 38 or 357 snap caps, so I don't want to dry fire it repeatedly, but I do want to get an idea of where this trigger is breaking. Two pounds, 4.1 ounces. So about two and a third pounds is where that single action trigger breaks. And as I said, it feels very, very good. One last thing I want to point out, or else I would be incredibly remiss, is this beautiful, now I know, again, another scary leather belt here that I'm about to show, but this beautiful gun belt rig made for my Cimarron Model P by Brian of Noble Leather. And Brian is just getting started as a leathersmith. In fact, this is one of, I don't think it's the first, but it's one of the first holsters that he's made that he sent me to try out. He actually put my initials and my name in this holster. How cool is that? Look at this nice, heavy leather and this beautiful color. This belt is set up with 38 special size cartridge loops. And let me bring it all back around in front. Something that's a little bit different with this belt is it has a strap for your leg as opposed to just a leather thong. And I like that because it keeps the holster more stable on my leg. Now, Brian, as I said, is just getting started and he's not really quite set up for orders yet or anything. And he said that he is just a one man operation. But when I get his permission, I'm going to post his address so that if anyone wants to contact him, he does make these one at a time by hand. And for one of his initial attempts, I think he did a tremendous job. And that's going to do it for the shop review of the Cimarron Model P. Now, normally in these reviews, I like to go right out to the range and shoot these revolvers or shoot whatever firearm I'm reviewing right after the shop review. But this time around, I'm going to change that a little bit because with my production schedule the way it is, 
this portion of the video is going to be released on the Saturday of the Independence Day weekend. So I'm going to wait and save the shooting portion of this video for Independence Day itself. So as long as the weather cooperates, they can get everything done, you're going to see this revolver being fired on Independence Day. It'll probably re be released at eight o'clock in the morning on Independence Day. So I usually try to pick what I call an all-American firearm for that particular video every year. And again, we're going to be looking at a classic all-American design, that being the Colt Peacemaker. So that's going to do it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, as always, make sure you forward those to me. Remember, if you purchase anything from Optics Planet, be sure to use my discount code, which is... And if you use that discount code, it's good for 5% off anything you purchase from Optics Planet. Also remember, WarbirdBunker.com is making t-shirts for the channel. If you go to WarbirdBunker.com, you can find my t-shirt there, as well as all of Nathan's other firearms and patriotic themed gear. And if you use my discount code WarbirdBunker.com, which is HRFunk for you, that'll save you 10% off your purchase from WarbirdBunker.com. And don't forget, House of Pain Munitions, as I said at the beginning of the video, supplied this revolver for the review today. If you go to House of Pain Munitions, you can use my discount code there and get 10% off anything you purchase from House of Pain, and that discount code is HRFUNK10. See you next time, folks. Have a great Independence Day weekend. And until we see each other again, good shooting, y'all.